Amen. While we change up the order this morning, and we'll go to the to the Lord this morning, to His Word this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to go with her. Amen. Sound like she's having fun this morning. <laughs> Sound like she's ready to have a little bit of fun this morning. Unlike some in the church, it's like we're ready to go to the grave. Amen. Baby, I wish we could have some of that and just put it in a bottle and give it to everyone else that's in here. Amen. I love the Lord. I don't know about you, but I, I praise him for, for his many blessings upon me. And uh, he's, he's so good to us. Amen. And we, I, I feel sometimes undeserving of his many blessings, uh, you know, when I consider uh, my efforts sometime and how little it seems like I'm able to do for him compared to what he done for me. But I tell you what, amen, the Bible is, is very adamant, amen, that God loves us and he cares for us. And all he asks of us is that we love him, amen. Uh, I, I know there's a lot of people that teach and preach perfection, and uh, I, I teach that a man or a woman, when they come to the Lord, they, they need to allow the Spirit of God to teach them and to help them with the troubles and trials of this life, and I believe in that. But I believe we get too caught up on trying to be perfect and we forget, amen, that God loves us and that we're to love him, amen. And while we try to follow a regimen, we try to follow a schedule because isn't it easy to follow a schedule? I mean, if you've got it all written out there, it's easy to, you know, get up on Monday morning at 8 o'clock, you do this from 8 to 8.15, 8 and then from 8.15 to 8.30, you do this, and then to 10.45, you go here. And I mean, we can follow a schedule we've been trained to. But when God says that he requires us or his, his desire is for us to love him, it doesn't hold us to a time schedule. It just means that we're to love him and with our heart. And I believe if we'll love him with our heart, then we'll begin to leave the haunts and the, the, the trappings of the world, and we'll want to, amen, praise him. We'll want to adore him. We'll want to spend time with him. We'll want to love him with all of our hearts and we won't be concerned with everything that's going on in the world. Amen. I can give you, if you want me to, a schedule to follow every day if you think it'll help you. But I promise you, at the end of the day, you're going to get tired of that schedule after a while, and you're going to fall away from it. You're going to get tired of going through it. But if you love him, you'll never get tired of being with him. You'll never get tired of spending time with him. Amen. And that's the, that's the difference in being a victorious Christian and having victory in the, the day-to-day life, even though you're going through something, but you still have that spirit of victory about you because you know that I love him and he loves me. And regardless of what I go through, it, it doesn't matter because I'm loved by the Father. Amen? And when we love him, I, I just want to get that in your spirit this morning. Amen? To love him, to honor him. And we can we can teach, you know, we can we can teach... Uh, from the standpoint of perfection and holiness and righteousness, and and I can give you a regimen to follow, and 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 I, Lord knows I was raised up in a lot of uh, regimented uh, serving, uh, but that's not what's going to cause you to fall in love with the Lord. What's going to cause you to fall in love with Him is when you realize you're lost and undone, and that you're headed towards hell, but because God stepped in and said, "That's mine." And I'm going to provide a way, amen, and we just have to simply trust him and love him. If you have your Bibles and you want to read with me today, uh, two thoughts uh, or two, two areas of Scripture, both in one in 1 Timothy, one in 2 Timothy. How many of you realize that we're living in the last days? Amen. Living in the last days. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and 2 Timothy chapter 3. Verse number one on each of them. They're right there together close by, so you should be able to follow me this morning. Uh, trust that we won't hold you too long this morning unless the Lord gets a hold. Amen. If, if he leaves it up to me this morning, it won't be long. If he gets involved, it'll be a little bit. Amen. We're not going to outstep the Lord this morning. But I look around and I see a world a void of love. I see a world that's full of lust. And I see a world that's full of, uh, uh, of, of what it perceives uh, is love, but really what it is, it's lust. 
and lust and love, though they uh, look the same to the naked eye or to, uh, to the untrained eye, uh, but really they're far apart. Uh, like the enemy uh, tries to uh, counterfeit everything that God does. The Bible teaches us that God is love. And the enemy, in his, uh, uh, his wisdom and his way of doing things and manipulating and tricking uh, people into doing things, uh, has come up uh, with lust uh, as a way to make people feel uh, uh, like they uh, have something between another. Uh, and what happens is, is whenever the Bible says when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin uh, because lust and love are not the same thing. So what we see today is people who have a lustful appetite. They, they love the opposite sex or they love the same sex. We, we see people that love sports. We see people that love uh, things that money can buy. We see people that have a lust uh, for love. But all of these things are void of what real love is, and because of this, it's empty in its uh, 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 in what they receive from it. But now, whenever we get to First Timothy and Second Timothy, uh, fourth chapter of First Timothy, Paul is going to instruct us about the time that we live in right now, and he says, "Now the Spirit speaketh expressly." Now understand, this is not Paul speaking here. It is the Holy Ghost speaking through Paul. He's being led here by what the Holy Ghost is telling him. It's not a thought or an opinion of what Paul thought it might be or what it could be, but it was the Spirit, the Holy Ghost of God, the third person in the Trinity. It was God speaking that this is what would be at that time. And he says that in the latter times, this means the last days. The latter times is the end time. Some shall depart from the faith. Now we get this understanding here that in the last days I see the heat being turned up on those of faith. Now I want to input right here just so we understand where we are. This election is going to be a pivotal point in the Christian life. If it goes one way, then the Christian will have protection and will have some semblance of, uh, of understanding from the top house down. Uh, we will be allowed to continue uh, uh, what we're doing, ministry in the church, outside of the church. We'll uh, continue to enjoy the tax-exempt status. We will continue to enjoy uh, being able to go out into the highways and the byways and freely preaching the Word of God even though it offends and it, it, it causes people to say things about you and, and talk bad about you, but you still will have that right to do that. If this election goes another way, then the church will lose her ability to be able to minister freely and openly. This is one of the first things that the agenda on the left wants to get rid of because they cannot establish that which they want the most, which is a free society, unless they do away with the religious mindset. They must do away with the religiosity. They must do away with the understanding that this is the infallible Word of God. They must do away with the understanding that people uh, have been taught this Word, and they must do everything in their power to get it out of the hands of the people and, and to uh, discourage uh, the churches from teaching, and they will bring the heavy hand of the law against the church in order to discourage this. When you have no word, when you have no absolute truth, when you have no plumb line, when you have no guide, when you have nothing there to go by, no standard, then you can institute your own ideas. Do we understand that? This is what's in stake in this election. And the reason for it is, is because not only the policies that will be handed down and mandated from the top house uh, but we understand that uh, uh, the men and women that we elect in the House and the Senate will no longer stand up for the right of the people. They will cave under anything that comes from the White House down. It used to be they were there for checks and balances, but now they're there just to say yes and write checks. So what we understand then is the pivotal moment that we stand before, looking out over uh, uh, the vastness of our future we can understand we're at a, a point in time where things can go good or things can go worse. 
He says that the Spirit speaketh fresh in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. So because of this, I see this election as going in the way that I don't want it to go. I, I'm not trying to discourage you, but I'm simply seeing what the Bible says is coming. And the Bible says that in the last days, the latter times, that some shall depart from the faith. What would cause a man to leave his faith? What would cause a woman to put down her faith and leave it and to go a different direction? It is because of a heavy handedness. It is because of the spirit of the enemy that will be moving and working in a time uh, where we have never seen before an oppression uh, from the house, uh, uh, the White House down. Uh, uh, as it manipulates its way through the fingers and the arms of all manners and branches of government, not only will the laws be written that will come against the church, but we will have the Supreme Court, the justices that will be appointed to sit on these courts. Can you just imagine uh, the uh, Supreme Court justices that will be allowed or that will be uh, ratified and be uh, put on the board and what their mindset will be? There will be nothing wrong with homosexuality. And this is just the tip of the iceberg, church. Homosexuality is not even the worst part of it. It's just the initial part. Bestiality is something the Bible says would be again in the days, the last days. Man with beast, woman would be doing things in an open society that we will find so vulgar and degrading, but because this word will be done away with, and because that uh, uh, the decency that this word teaches people live by, even those who are not saved, uh, but they've been taught by a good mama or a good daddy that was saved, uh, they have this instilled in them that there's some things that are right and there's some things that are just wrong. But in an open society where this is no longer uh, valid and where it's put down, and, and, and the old song you know, says dust on the family Bible, uh, it won't be dusty anymore. It'll be completely gone. Not only that, but openness to enter in relationships with minors. This is another one that's coming. See, homosexuality is just the tip of the iceberg. It went with, you know, man and man, woman and woman. Now it went to a man wanting to be a woman, a woman wanting to be a man. This is fine. And the things that are coming are going to degrade. They're not going to get better, but they're only going to degrade and get worse. And we're going to live in a society, if this goes wrong, that will promote such things. In their world, there's nothing right and there's nothing wrong. It's up to the individual. However he or she feels, they can do what they want to do, and it must be okay. This is the mindset that we're facing. So, whenever this happens, he says, in the last times, uh, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So what we begin to understand is that what causes a man or a woman to leave the faith. Now, here when he says faith, he's talking about the teaching of Jesus Christ, him crucified and risen the third day. Amen. Sitting at the right hand of the Father. That's the only gospel message that delivers Amen. A person from sin and saves that soul uh, and establishes them their name in the Lamb's book of life uh, and gives them the right to appear before the throne of God and to make a petition and to call upon his name and gives them the confidence day in and day out that they're going to heaven when this life is over. That's the only message that can be preached. Uh, but what's going to happen is, is we're going to face Amen. Seducing spirits and doctrines of devils in these last days uh, where men and women behind bookboards are uh, leading people uh, uh, down the wrong path, uh, saying things, giving over to oppression from the governments, uh, 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 leaving this true word uh, and following after things that they mandate. Uh, we're going to face a time that's coming and it's coming very quickly. Uh, and if the church will realize this uh, and begin to pray and begin to make your calling and election sure, uh, and to get yourself underneath the word of God uh, and become subject unto him uh, and to him alone uh, and to get your eyes off of this world uh, and get your eyes off of what's going on uh, and begin to cry out unto him, uh, God have mercy uh, on this world that we live in. Uh, God have mercy on this country uh, that we live in. Uh, my home, uh, my children, uh, my loved ones, uh, God cover them. Uh, put your hand of protection upon them. Uh, we refuse to fall. Uh, we refuse to bow. Uh, 
We refuse to give in. Uh, hide this word in our hearts uh, so when they come to take it, uh, I can have it in me. Amen. It's getting to that point. The Bi- uh, not the Bible, but there was a, a documentary that was done by a missionary. They shipped Bibles to China. Now, we understand that the Bible is not openly read in China. It is an oppressive society to anyone that would read the Bible, any shape, form, or fashion. They don't want that word read because why? Because this Bible is liberating. It's freedom, meaning you can be held in captivity, but yet you can sing like a bird. Amen. You can be locked up in a man-made prison, but yet you can be free. For whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Uh, I may not be able to go out and do this, that, and that, but I can have the spirit of freedom living on the inside. Uh, and I can stare at those four walls. Uh, I can stare at those bars. Uh, but yet I can sing uh, praises unto the King of kings uh, and the Lord of lords. Uh, because it's not the situation I'm in that dictates uh, how I feel. Uh, but it's my God living on the inside uh, that I can face anything uh, and still, amen, sing a song unto him. What would cause a person to depart from the faith? That teaching of correctness, the right teaching that Paul came and preached. It's no longer the blood of bulls and goats, but now it's the precious blood of Jesus that cleanses us from sin. It's belief and trust in what he did at Calvary's cross that now, amen, redeems a sinful soul washes it in his precious blood uh, and sets his feet upon a right course uh, and gives him confidence to move freely, amen, in this life. What would cause a person to remove from teaching that and living that? It's going to be an oppression that's going to come from the top down. Giving heed to these seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, This is more evident now than we've ever seen in our entire lifetime. That a person such as one running for president can say that I support, amen, homosexuality and I support abortion and I support a woman's rights and I support everything about this uh, and I'm a champion for the women but yet go across the sea over there uh, and take millions upon millions of dollars uh, from people who are killing homosexuals uh, and killing women uh, and abusing them and beating them upon just the word uh, from an accuser uh, but yet she can take from both hands and play both sides speaking lies in hypocrisy meaning that uh, uh, the, the, the people that's fixing to take over this country, amen, play any side that benefits them. Amen. And who do we benefit? We don't benefit them in no shape, form, or fashion. So what we begin to understand then is that they must do away with the church. Or if they can't do away with the church, they must infiltrate the church. Uh, They must get behind the pulpit. They must get in the children's ministry. They must get in the school system. Uh, They must get anywhere they can have an influence uh, over the thinking uh, so they can begin to manipulate it and change it. This is why it's seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared, with a hot iron. The only way, the only way a person can can speak these lies so hypocritically and and do the things that they do day in and day out and have no no remorse whatsoever, uh, no fear in standing before millions of people and declaring that I'm a champion for this, but at the same time uh, uh, taking everything from here That is in a direct conflict with that. The only way they can do this is because their conscience has been seared. In other words, have you ever seen anything cauterized? Amen. It's where you take the heat and you apply it to the wound uh, 
and it, in the heat of it, immediately it closes it up. Uh, and so it can no longer flow freely. Uh, their minds have been seared with a hot iron. Uh, the devil has laid upon them uh, and has blocked, amen, the freedom, the flowing uh, of sense and, 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 and conscience. Uh, there's nothing there, amen, to hold them. Uh, they've been turned over to a reprobate mind. Uh, the enemy's got a hold of this thing, uh, and he's ramrodding it and running it just like he wants to. That's not the end of the story. But just so we know where we are, this is what's taking place. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. He goes on to tell us, If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ. If I put you in remembrance of these things, he says, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. If I call it like I see it, and as the Lord begins to deal with my heart and show me the things that are coming, and the reason for this is not to discourage uh, or to get us fearful of what's coming uh, or to make us afraid of what's coming, but it is so that we will not be sheep being led to the slaughter, but our eyes will be opened, uh, our hearts will be strengthened in the Lord, uh, and that we can face the opposition, uh, we can face the test that's coming, uh, because if we don't know what's coming, uh, or if we're not sure of what's coming, uh, or if we're not been made a aware of what's coming, uh, when the thief comes, uh, we could be led blindly away. Know this. Get this from chapter 4, verse 1. It's going to be seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So the devil has infiltrated this system in such a way. Now, it's not of God. It's of the enemy. These ideas and these thoughts, and I'm not going to put one side uh, uh, better than the other side because they both, to me, have fallen under the influence of the enemy. We We have been conditioned to be so politically correct in this world that we live in that when a man like Donald Trump stands up and says some of the things he says, it absolutely causes some of them to want to pull their hair out. They can't understand how could you want to do some of these things that he wants to do. They, they've been so conditioned, we've been so desensitized to sin that when we see two men walking together holding hands and kissing, it doesn't even bother anybody in the world. Uh, when we see a man or a woman changed uh, uh, surgically to be something else, uh, it doesn't even bother a lot of people in this world. Why? Because through all outlets and all media and all forms of communication, we have been trained... To let it happen. So it's a seducing spirit. In other words, it don't come down here in the south and make a law and says, today this is what's going to happen. But it conditions the people. It's a little bit here and a little bit there. Uh, we preached this a few weeks ago out of Isaiah or out of a Proverbs uh, about a little slumber and a little sleep. Uh, uh, it's a little bit here and a little there. Uh, and it's a conditioning. Uh, it, it's a, a putting up of the gates uh, whenever they bring the animals in. Uh, they don't just run them straight, uh, but they condition them to follow the gates uh, so that whenever they get to the place they want them to be, they're unaware of the danger they're in. We've been conditioned, we've been conditioned to not think about these things, but just let it happen. And now we see, so uh, the seducing spirit is this, and the doctrine of the devil is this, is that it comes from the devil, and it's coming in such a way that it's not a mallet upside the head that's going to change you, but it's a little bit here and a little bit there. It's a little here and a little there. There's a responsibility, parents and grandparents, to teach our children what the Word of God says. Because I promise you they're being taught something else in school. Even in Berrien County where there's still uh, the ability to pray and to still call on God. Uh, But there are minds in this community, in those schools, uh, that don't think the way this Word of God teaches. Uh, It's getting here. Uh, It's already here. Uh, And you better be mindful of your child uh, and teach them what is right from what is wrong. Uh, Because if you don't, they will not follow the right thing. We can't expect our children 
to hear every day the doctrination of devils and the hypocrisy that's being spewed out against everything that we stand for. If we don't stand for it, and if we don't uphold it, and if we don't teach it to them, they'll fall. The seducing spirits and the doctrine of devils speaking these lies in hypocrisy because they have no conscience. Their, their, their conscience has been seared. And they can teach these things as a truth because it is firmly what they believe. And it's going to cause some to depart from the faith in this last time. It's going to move men and women from believing that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. See, the problem is, is we already have some that are preaching and teaching that there are a separate ways or alternative ways to heaven other than Christ. We already have the doctrines being preached and the, uh, the spirit, the, that seducing spirit that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, gets into a person's heart. And it begins to just pull them gently away from the spirit of truth. And, and it begins to teach them and seduce them. They hear things, they see things, and, and they allow this spirit to begin to manipulate their heart. So whenever Oprah Winfrey stands up, and, and, and don't laugh because this is the truth. Oprah Winfrey has more influence than a lot of ministers. Oprah Winfrey addresses more people throughout the course of her daily doings than a lot of than I will ever touch. And whenever she begins to say things, people are so void and ignorant of the truth of God's word because it's not been taught. They've not lived in homes where it's been preached or lived before them. They didn't have the same upbringing I did. And because they're so void of truth, uh, whenever she says something as simple as, there are other ways to heaven besides Christ, there are people who believe her. Does everybody? No. But are there some? Yes. How many? I don't know. But just think about this. Hell is real. And people that get it wrong here are going to hell. We have a great responsibility to live the word, preach the word, and be an example to this world. So this is to the brethren. This is, he's preaching here to the church. If you put them, uh, if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, Timothy, he said, Thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto you have attained. In other words, he said, Timothy, if you'll remind the brethren of these things, I'm not preaching to the world on this particular issue. This is to the church. We can't give up what we have been taught. We can't give up this word of God. But just like our guns, uh, there's going to come a day they're going to come for this. I'm not freely going to give up either one of them. I, I mean, it's, gonna, it's, it's going to get hard in this world whenever this word becomes against the law. Brother David Tolbert, one of my kind of a mentor, listening to him preach and being around him as often as I could. Uh, for many that don't know, he suffered a debilitating stroke about three, four weeks ago, uh, coming back from the Philippines, and he uh, is still somewhat incapacitated and uh, unable to preach and unable to do anything, but just... Uh, one of the most powerful men of God I'd ever encountered. Uh, preaching, his, his knowledge and his depth uh, challenged me in a way that I've never been challenged before to dig deeper into the Word of God. And he was such a blessing to me. And a lot of what I preach and how I preach is influenced by Brother David Tolbert. But he preached a message one time talking about America, a nation in trouble. And he began to talk about how we would allow things to come and how this nation would not be a, a, a whip from outside, but it would be whip from inside. We would allow ourselves to leave the Word of God. We would allow ourselves to just simply lay it down. We would, you know, because you look at the world we live in and people talk about, I'll fight for this and I'll fight for that. Let me break some news to you. The left does not 
expect to encounter you in a hand-on-hand combat. They don't fight that way. The left, the mindset, the liberal agenda does not, it does not want to have a, a, a once-for-all confrontation because they know they'll lose. But what they do is they pick, and they begin to needle, and they begin to take this one down and change the way this one thinks. And they're in it for if it takes a thousand years to get their way, they're in it. See, we are in it to win right now. Let's go fight right now. Let's get this thing over with, and let's declare this day who the Lord is. That's, that's the right mindset. I'm right, you're wrong, and if you don't like it, we'll sell it right here. The left is willing to cower down and say, okay. But then they'll come back, and they'll come back, and they'll come back. And they keep little by little until they desensitize people's ways of thinking. You figure 20 years ago, they wouldn't show what they show on Channel 10 and 44 and 31. But look at the vulgar and look at the language that they allow on primetime TV. And, the, and it's even to the point where they're, they're showing the, the nakedness of people on TV. Men and women in bed, men and men in bed. People doing things that 20 years ago, we would have never let this happen. But the church, oh, we'll fight for this. We'll fight for this. I hear preachers all the time. Call for the church to stand up. Call for the church to stand up. Call for the church to stand up. The church is never going to stand up. It's not. Why? Because they're not going to put it to us in a way where we'll come together to stand up, but they're just little by little. They'll get a preacher in a pulpit at this church, and he'll start preaching that homosexuality isn't really that bad. And next thing you know, he'll influence his uh, uh, congregation. And then they'll influence their children. They'll influence neighbors. And then this one over here. And the next thing you know, this influence begins to filter out through the community. And then when all of a sudden, when they do something, well, there'll be 50 of us or 100 of us or 200 of us. We'll be outraged. But where's the thousands of us that should be outraged? Because these seducing spirits and doctrines of devils and how it comes, and it just, little by little, it begins to tear away at the moral fabric. It begins to tear away at our foundation of who we are. They're striking at it every day, trying to tear us down and get us from what we know to be truth till we get to the point where, well, as long as me and mine saved, I, I, you know, I can't help what everybody else is doing. Remember what I said. For those that get it wrong here, Hell is going to be their home. Hell. When is the church going to realize that people are dying lost and going to hell and we are the ones God has put on this earth to make a difference? But it just continues to fall on deaf ears and unconcerned hearts. Because as long as I'm saved, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm all right. Hezekiah was given a warning that his children would face Nebuchadnezzar because of what he had done. He had allowed the enemy to come into the house. He allowed the the people that Nebuchadnezzar sent to to give them a, 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 a gift. And he had opened up the doors of the temple. And he said, come in, let me show you everything. Sister Barbara, he opened up the door to the devil. And the devil walked right in and spied everything that was there. And God sent him warning by Isaiah and said, Because you have done this thing, your children are going to be taken captive. And you know what Hezekiah said? One of the greatest kings of Israel. As long as there's peace in my day, I'm all right. No thought, no care, no concern for his children's children's children and children. As long as it's, you know, as long as I have peace, I'm fine. But see, they keep coming little by little until one day the children of Israel, his son, 
his son's son that stood on the throne, his son's son that stood on the throne, little by little they kept moving away. Want to be bad, want to be good. I, I, I've got a list of them, of all the kings of Judah and Israel, and I've, I've studied them. But it's been a while since I've looked at it, and I can't remember all the names. I, I get them backwards sometimes because <laughs> they all, they all, you know, it's not, Tom, it's not like Tom and Chris and John and, you know, Beth and Sam, and, you know, it's not easy names to remember. <laughs> I get Azekiah and Ezariah and Ezemiah, and I get them backwards sometimes. Do you? Or have you read them lately? <laughs> it's little by little. Let's teach our children. Let's make sure our grandchildren know. I have to remind mine from time to time, from my oldest to my little ones, this is not right. This is why we believe what we believe. I don't care what that one says. I don't care what the professor says. This is what the Bible says. This is what we believe. Now, I'm going to tell you, I got a 19-year-old that's as, she's as much a diehard conservative as I've ever seen one. And I'm so proud of her. I didn't say Republican, I said conservative. I've got no faith anymore in the Republican Party or the Democratic Party, but conservatism I still have belief in because it's a, it's a way of living, and I believe the Bible teaches that. And boy, she ain't got no use for anything on the Internet. She takes world history. And can I tell you, she's had more battles in these four or five weeks of school than she's ever had in her life. But Daddy was preparing her, <laughs> getting her ready, because I said, baby, when you get there, they ain't going to believe like you believe. They ain't going to think like you think. And she said, Daddy, I just didn't realize how bad it was. She says, I sat in a class of 25 students, and they're wanting they're wanting socialism. They're wanting the government to pay for everything. She said, Daddy, they think they are owed. And this is not just black. This is not just black. Why? It's a predominantly, I mean, there's a lot of black students there. But she said it's all the students. They, they want their college paid. They believe their college should be paid for. They believe when they get out of school, the government should give them a $15 job. They, they believe the government should subsidize and give them an apartment to live in. They believe the government should transport them and get them wherever they want to go. They are believing this. This is what they want. And boy, she had a field day in there. But she stood her ground because daddy, now I, I, I don't take credit for her tenacity, but if you'll ask her, and if she'll be truthful with it, she'll tell you from day one, Daddy's been pounding it to her. I didn't let up. I'm, I've been relentless. I didn't push my youngin' in a lot of things because I wanted them to make their own decisions what to do sometimes. But when it came to what was right and what was wrong, Daddy has been preaching it, pounding it, putting it to her. I don't let her up on it. Never have and I never will. When they come in there and want me to do something, I say, why ain't you done it? Why can't you do it? Well, Dad, Dad, no, you figure it out. Because when they learn how to think for themselves, they won't be led astray by other people thinking for them. If we give in to seducing spirits, and I'll close with this. This is, I didn't get to 2 Timothy, did I? I didn't think I was going to be there that long. Whenever we, when we get to the place where we won't think for ourselves, this, this is the world that we live in today. We live in a world that wants somebody else to do it for me. We want somebody else to do it for me. And whenever the church gets to the place where well, I, I, now, I'm, I'm going to step on some toes because I, I want you to get this and I want you to understand this. I, I say this out of love, but this is a stern warning to this church, not, not just to the church, but this church. You don't take for granted what I preach and what I say. You take your Bible and you read your Bible 
and you learn for yourself what this Word of God says. My job is to teach this Bible and to preach under the anointing the specific message that God wants me to say about that particular time. But that does not negate your responsibility to read this Word and to know what this Word says. Even if it's nothing I've preached before or it's nothing I've said before or Brother Chris has never preached out of this book or that book, but you read this book, all of them, from the cover to the maps, and you understand it and you know what it says for yourself. Because when the enemy comes and those seducing spirits begin to permeate, they've been held up, I believe, because of the preaching that's been going on. I believe that we have lived in a, an umbrella where the Spirit of God has been allowed to keep some things back. But the choice of the people is going to break that hand of God off of this country. We have been kept by the hand of God. But when this country makes a unified decision to leave the ways of God, and elects an, uh, an idea and an administration that wants nothing to do with this Bible, the hand of God is going to be removed. Those spirits are going to be allowed to freely go about. And if you think you've seen some bad things, if you think you've been a part of some bad situations, you ain't seen nothing yet. And it will behoove you to know this word, not just what Brother Chris preached on Sunday, but know this word for yourself. When your family, your sons, your daughters come in being seduced by these spirits because they will not submit to the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, and when they come in your house and begin to preach doctrine that you should know that's wrong, you better have this word to be able to refute it. You better know the word of God. You better have an understanding. I didn't say you'd understand it all. I don't understand it all. But that's what the Holy Ghost is for. He is our teacher. He is our reprover. Whenever we're wrong, he reproves us. Amen. He is our exhorter. He is our rebuker. He is the one that comes and says, hey, get out of this. Hey, go this way. And we better get to where we listen to the voice of the Lord. This is a stern warning for our church. Because I believe the doctrines of devils is here in America. I believe the seducing spirits are beginning to move throughout portions of this country. And after this election, I believe that the hand of God is going to be removed. Young boy, boy I work with, he, he goes to church and I love him to death. He, he just, he's having a hard time. Some people just have a hard time living right. And it's not hard to live right. It's just if we don't commit, it's hard to live right. And I've been trying to be patient with him. You know, sometimes it's hard when you're a Pentecostal preacher to be patient with people that won't straighten up and do right. <laughs> and we believe everybody ought to be perfect when they get up from the altar. You know how Pentecostals are. You've got to be perfect when you get up. No, I'm just playing. But I, I've been trying to be patient with him and, you know, and work with him and, and, and encourage him. And... He and his wife, she works there at the hospital, and she's, she's a strong Christian, uh, just a, a joy to be around. And uh, she's a praying woman. I, I believe she's a praying young woman. And uh, she does a lot to encourage him. And she sent me an email one day, and she said, I want to thank you for, you know, for being that light to my husband. She said, it's made such a difference in his life. And I, and I, I, was, I was really appreciative of that. And we're sitting there that day, and I said, you know, I, I see this election as, as such a pivotal point not just for this country, but for the, 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 the Christian. Because that's what's ultimately, you know, up for stake is the souls of man. And, uh, and I said, I just don't see the one on the right going in. I, I just don't see it happening as, as much as I want it to. Is he perfect? No. Is he the right man for the right time? I believe he is. Not because of his personal life or his way he says things, but because he's not willing to play along with things as usual. He's wanting to change things up and get things back to common sense. Say what you mean, mean what you say. 
I'd like to see that come back in this country. Common sense and and a, and, and, and a man speak a word and mean it, say it, mean it, own it. I've messed up in my life. I own it. I don't try to duck it and run away from it. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. He forgive me of it. But have I done wrong? Yes, I've done wrong. Have I said things wrong? Yes, I've said things wrong. But I just don't see it because the Bible says in the latter times, the last days, things are lining up according to this word. Show us where we are. Will we take the warning this morning? Teach your children, your grandchildren, nieces, nephews, don't be afraid to tell them what the Bible says. Don't be afraid that if we don't know the Bible, it's hard to teach them. So know this Bible. Be that light in your home. When you watch news, when you watch talk shows, when you see things of this nature, and it's contrary to this sound doctrine, I hope it checks your heart, and I hope you turn the channel. Like I said, I got one, I can't hardly watch it anymore. It says such lies, I can't hardly stand to listen to it. Get in this word. We live in that time. We live in that time that Paul said was coming. I hope this morning you've been stirred in your hearts to not to be afraid of what's coming, but to be mindful of what's coming so we can prepare. All of this negativity that I've said today can be summed up with this. Let me read it. In Hebrews in the 11th chapter, If Paul's the writer of Hebrews, this is how he closed out the 11th chapter. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson, of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel and of the prophets, who through faith they subdued kingdoms and wrought righteousness, obtained promises and stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness they were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. They were tortured, given the ability or the under, or the willingness or uh, the uh, the ability to come out of it, but they wouldn't because they wanted to obtain a better resurrection. Others had a trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sown asunder, they were tempted, they were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and in caves of the earth. And all of these, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. They went through those things then in a time not like what we're going to face where the enemy knows he has but a short time to finish. And it's going to be turned up and ramped up in such a way. These seducing spirits and doctrines of devils are going to come against the Christian. Be ready. Why? God, having provided something better for us. Ooh, I like that. God has something better provided for us that they without us should not be made perfect. In other words, all the trouble they went through, they stood in faith and believed in God. But he says he has provided something better for us. We have the Holy Spirit, amen. And we, amen, are on the Holy Spirit to rely on to help us in the day and hour we're in. Whenever the enemy comes, lean on the Holy Ghost. He said, take no thought for that hour in which you speak, for the Spirit shall speak through you. No need to plan what you're going to do when they come. No need to do this, that, or the other. Just arm yourself in the Word. And when they come to your door, you'll have the right thing to say. I fully believe that some of the greatest miracles that man could ever talk about has yet to take place. 
I read a lot of miracles in this Bible, but I believe there's going to be miracles like we've never seen before because a man or a woman is going to trust in God against an evil spirit and a seducing devil that we're going to face in this present day, and the miraculous hand of God is going to move in their midst. And we're going to see things. It may not be publicized. It may not make it to Channel 10 News. But we're going to see things with our eyes. If we'll hold to God, we'll hold to the truth and won't allow it to turn us from the truth. We're going to see the enemy be turned away from the hand of God. I love you this morning. I appreciate you. Are you glad this morning to be born again? Are you glad this morning you're saved this morning? Amen, saved, amen, hallelujah, saved from what? Amen, that wrath that is to come. Understand there will be a trouble, a test, a trial that we'll all go through. And if we face tomorrow, we'll face, we'll face the enemy. If we have any time left, we're going to face even more enemies than we've ever faced. But God's not going to forget us. God will not forget you. Amen, his hand is with you. His eyes on you. You're part of the family of God if you said yes to Jesus Christ.